a disease or a condition is a problem if it does one of these two things. Number one, it impairs our ability to live. Number two, it impairs our ability to care for ourselves and for people around us, prevent us from reintegrating back into our communities. Forty years ago, 40 years ago, people with multiple sclerosis, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, motor neuron disease, Parkinson's, and even certain forms of stroke, they were not able to reintegrate back into their communities or to their vocation. Today they can. Why is that? Every single disease and condition that I just mentioned, except for stroke, is neurological, is progressive, there's no cure, and there's no miracle drug. Alzheimer's disease is no different than any of those diseases. Why can't we do the same thing? The only reason I believe that they were able to reintegrate back is because of, again, supportive pharmaceuticals and rehabilitation. Our human brain is about three pounds heavy. For every heartbeat, 25 to 25% to, to of the blood supply goes to our human brain. Our human brain is one of the most powerful organs in our body. It is supplied by a very complex and a rich network of blood vessels. When you look at Alzheimer's disease, the way it's clinically diagnosed, it's purely based on one's ability to perform their instrumental activities of daily living and basic cognitive skills. The progression of the disease is classified into seven stages. As the individual declines, as they move from one stage to another, they decline in their ideal functions, activities of daily living and basic cognitive skills. Activities of daily living is nothing but simple stuff like feeding, brushing our teeth, dressing, bathing, walking, running. For us to do all of these activities, we need strength, good range of motion, balance, coordination, and posture. Some of us, for the last 20 years, maybe 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, we've been doing all of these activities either consciously or unconsciously. Alzheimer's disease impacts short-term memory. Usually, the long-term memory stays and it's the last one to go. Well, if that's the case, what is that you and I did every single day? What is that my patients that are about 90 years old or even 80 years old did every single day since the age of three. And as they slip through the stages of the disease, why do they forget to perform those activities? There's something called as mini brain. We call it the cerebellum. Cerebellum has 50% of brain neurons. When, you look, when we look at our human brain, our human brain has over 100 billion neurons and over trillion connections. We call them synapses. If you take those neurons and if you connect them with synapses, you can go to the moon and come back. That's how much we have in our three-pound brain. Now, cerebellum is a mini brain. 50% of the brain neurons are in cerebellum. Alzheimer's disease is the disease of the cerebral cortex. 
Alzheimer's disease doesn't usually affect the cerebellum directly. Cerebellum is responsible for movements, coordination, posture, and balance. Every single com component that you and I need to complete our instrumental activities of daily living. Well, if that's the case, why are individuals with Alzheimer's disease tend to decline as they progress through one stage of the disease to another? Let's talk a little, little bit about this stage here. Let's say that this stage where I'm standing right now is about 1,000 square feet. I'm going to take a gallon of water, a bucket of water, I'm going to pour it in one corner. And I'm going to let the water trickle all the way down to the opposite corner. How long do you think it's going to take? Let's say five minutes. Now, let me increase the square footage of this space, the stage. Let's increase it to 10,000 square feet. And I take the same bucket of water, pour it in that corner, and let it trickle all the way down to the opposite side. How long do you think it takes? It's going to take a little bit more time. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. This particular stage that I'm standing is the human brain. The water that I just poured is the disease process. There's nothing you and I can do to stop the progression of the disease. Is it possible for us to slow the progression of the disease by increasing the functional surface area of our human brain? Is it possible for us to increase the cognitive reserve in such a way that we can enable our patients, our clients, to continue to perform those activities of daily living? And even some basic cognitive skills. Our brain is directly proportionate to what we learn. The size of our brain is directly proportionate to what we learn. The brain today is much more larger than the brain 20 years ago. The reason being is the new technologies, the new learning, the constant changes, the advancements we have to adjust and adapt from the environment has enabled our brain to grow. Theory of neuroplasticity states that you and I have the ability to mold our brain the way we want. It was widely believed that neuroplasticity occurred only during early developmental stages. Studies lately shows that we can see neuroplasticity in a 90-year-old brain. For neuroplasticity to occur, a task that requires learning must be repeated 400 to 450 times, and it has to be errorless. In our current reimbursement model, do physicians, do therapists, or any other clinicians have that kind of time to spend with their patients, to teach them to learn newer skills, to increase their functional surface area of the human brain? Who does? It's the caregivers. Caregivers spend 24-7 with them in a nursing home, in an assisted living facility, in any institution. They have the ability to give our patients an opportunity to develop neuroplasticity. In a child daycare center, the caregiver not only cares for the kid, in addition, the caregiver teaches the kid. They train the kid, they educate the kid, they get the kid ready for kindergarten. They provide care and they, and they teach. They're caregivers and teachers. They inspire learning. They get them ready for the world. Can me as a provider, can we as a provider 
do the same with our patients that have, all, that have Alzheimer's disease. Provide care and at the same time also teach. A task that needs to be learned has to be practiced errorlessly at least 400 to 450 times. A task that they already know, you don't want them to lose it, that needs to be practiced over and over. Traditionally, the nursing home industry has done a phenomenal job caring for individuals with Alzheimer's disease. But is caring just enough? Can we continue to do what we've been doing for the last 25 years? Can we learn something from the daycare industry? Care and teach to create neuroplasticity. Are our services relevant to our clients' needs, to their demands? Can we continue to do what we've been doing? Even today, nursing homes, assisted living facilities are built like hotels. They're built like institutions. Buildings that have no sense of purpose, that is not therapeutic in nature, that lacks the human element. My question to you today, if you may allow me to ask, number one, can we as caregivers and care providers approach care from a treatment standpoint? Can developers like me, providers like me, operators like me, design and construct facilities that incorporate human element? It's purpose-driven. Many times I've heard people tell me there's nothing you can do for Alzheimer's disease, uh, Alzheimer patients. Where there is no hope, there is no life. Hope gives life. Hope paves paths for innovation and inventions. Imagine for a second if every caregiver, if every care provider, if every developer, if, if every operator designs and constructs facility that incorporates human element, is purpose-driven, what we as an industry can do collectively for, the, for greater good. Every evening, Walter would walk down the corridor around 7 p.m. in the night and ask for breakfast. He just had his dinner. Walter was a very successful developer and owned a bunch of vineyards. It was still out, bright outside. He just had his dinner. It's about around 7 p.m. He's asking for breakfast. Norma, every single evening at 5.30, she would stand by the door wanting to leave. She wants to go home. She's 94 years old. She wants to go home so, so that she can take care of her five-year-old kids that would get dropped off the bus. At that time, I decided that I need to do something for these clients, for my clients. What is it I can do to reset their biological clock? What is it I can do to reset their physiological clock? Is there any way I could bring the outside inside the building? Long-term memory is intact. They're very very close to the early childhood days. What if I create a capsule, a time capsule that looks like 1930s and 1940s? What if I bring the elements from the outside inside? What if I give them a feeling that the sun can rise and sunset inside the building? How many saw the apple fall from, a, from the tree? before Isaac Newton saw it. My guess is many. But Isaac Newton decided to do something about it. And that's what put man on the moon. The way we think about Alzheimer's care is broken. It doesn't have to be.
Thank you so much.